Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the latest edition of the Aperio Teaching and Learning Meeting. Today is Wednesday, February the 5th. My name is Matt Burgess. I'm the University of Virginia, and I'll be the facilitator for this discussion today as we get together and share some recap and share some conversation about the recent Sakai Camp meeting in Orlando. Some of you had a chance to be there. I was lucky enough to be there for the first time. Uh, some of you were able to participate virtually, which is great. And some of you just want to hear about some of the exciting things that we talked about, which is also great. I think we're going to have a great discussion. I've posted a link to the Etherpad in the chat, and I'll go ahead and post that link again. So please feel free to visit the Etherpad and sign in if you haven't done so already. As always, we take a few minutes at the beginning of these meetings to share just some general announcements about the community. And Wilma Hodges, our incredible community coordinator, is on the call. Wilma, do you have some announcements that you'd like to share with us before we dive in? Sorry, I was searching for my unmute. <laughs> uh, actually, uh... No, I don't think I have any announcements right now, um, oddly enough. <laughs> so if I think of any, I will chime in later. Sounds good. Looks like somebody has posted in the Etherpad um, that there is a tour of Dr. Chuck's instructional analytics in SUGI, um, which is up for possible inclusion in Sakai 21. And that tour is open to everybody, and it is scheduled for Thursday, February the 6th, which is tomorrow. Uh, from 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. And there is a Zoom link in the Etherpad for that meeting uh, that should take you right into that meeting so that you can take a tour of uh, those analytics in SUGI if you'd like to do that. Analytics were obviously a hot topic at Sakai Camp as they have been throughout the EdTech world. So if that's something that is interesting to you, uh, then please feel free to check that out. I'm sure Dr. Chuck will be happy to <coughs> walk you through that. All right, and one more thing before we dive into our discussion here. Uh, we do have a JIRA posted for JIRA review, and so I'm going to go ahead and post that link in the chat as well. And while I do that, I see that Charles has posted in the chat that there was a question about whether Dr. Chuck's presentation would be recorded for later viewing. I didn't get a chance to talk to Dr. Chuck about this presentation, so I don't know if that is going to be recorded or not. Wilma or anybody else, do you have any more information on that? Yeah, I'm not sure, but um, we can ask him and see if he can record it. So we'll hunt down Dr. Chuck about that. Hopefully he won't be too shy about making that recording so that we can make that available to folks who might have another conflict. And Josh says in the chat that he just turned up and suspects that he will be willing. So that is wonderful. We're going to hold you to that, Josh. When we talk to Dr. Chuck, we're going to tell him that Josh has already approved this and has said that uh, you've got to go ahead and make this recording happen. <laughs> And I see that Terry is commenting in the chat that uh, the JIRA link is refusing to let me in. I am also getting a denied error. Uh, so maybe who, somebody who does have access to this JIRA can walk us through it. Uh, this is SAC 38689. Um, since I don't have permission to view it, I suspect that maybe it is a security JIRA. Okay, and Sean Foster is saying in the chat, that that is the case. You will have to be logged in to view it and on the security team. Uh, Sean, since you are on the security team, I believe, do you want to walk us through this? Because I think that'd be very valuable. I'm just worried about discussing it on a recorded call. Sure. Wilma, do we want to hold this one off uh, for another occasion since these calls are recorded? Or do we want to pause the recording? I think we might be able to do that. Yeah, why don't we pause the recording? Sure. And, um, that way we can... Leave it I out. will go <laughs> ahead and do that right now. And we are now recording again. So I'm very excited uh, to get a chance uh, to share some of my thoughts about Sakai Camp and to hear uh, the thoughts from other attendees and other folks who 
were able to participate virtually or weren't able to participate but are excited to hear more about the kinds of things that we talked about and, and share their own experiences based on uh, their own institutions. Um, so I don't know if anybody wants to go first or if you want me to just start calling on people, elementary so school style. I have some pictures if you guys want to see a slideshow while we talk. I can yeah, that sounds great. All right, I'm load these up. We should also put the, uh, the link to the agenda and notes in the chat. And I will do that right now, Laura. I'm a visual person. I love it when we use this visual thing. <laughs> Why not? Now that it doesn't need flash enabled and all that other malarkey. Those links are also in the Etherpad document already. Ooh, 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 good to know. That's why I thought yes. I'd point it out. That's right. <laughs> Thank you, Charles. Charles. Um, so for folks who haven't had a chance to check out the Etherpad yet, uh, there are a number of great links um, there that might be helpful to you, especially if you weren't able to be with us. Um, there's a link to some detailed notes, uh, which I already posted uh, in the chat. Uh, then there are some links to a roadmap document, uh, the straw man document for Sakai 21, and then a document related uh, to UI and some UI discussion that we had. Uh, so we've got uh, several important links there, and I'll post some of those uh, in the chat here as well uh, if they come up in the course of our conversation. So we've got a slideshow of some photos here that Wilma has shared. Thank you, Wilma, for sharing that. Um, Wilma, do you want to kick us off by just sharing some of your uh, initial thoughts about the meeting? Um, sure. Uh, we we had a... a jam-packed two and a half days as usual <laughs> um, so uh, we got a lot done and as matt mentioned um, we did kind of a focus on ui the first day um, we did some kind of workshop type activities around that and um, kind of started thinking about what uh, the new UI should look like for Sakai 21. So that was a big focus of a lot of our discussions. Um, there was a steering group that came out of that. That was one of the kind of takeaways. Um, we also talked about some gnarly workflows and ways to simplify the process of uh, doing things like setting up an assignment or a forum post and ways we can make um, some of those setup screens a little more consistent across tools so it doesn't look like you're in a totally different thing when you're doing a test or quiz as opposed to an assignment. Um, we had a technical breakout, um, and I know that there was a long list of things that the technical folks wanted to um, kind of dive into a little bit more, and I think they've kind of taken some of those offline because we didn't get to everything. Um, we seldom do, but it's always a, a great time to network and, and bring good ideas to the surface. So, um, so that's just kind of a brain dump of <laughs> my impressions, but I'm interested to see what other folks think. Josh Wilson, you were involved in facilitating a lot of the high level conversations that we had, which I thought were very valuable. Do you want to share some thoughts? Yeah, sure. I mean, I think, you know, the from a high level perspective, I think we did a good job figuring out what we wanted our outcomes to be over the next couple of years. And uh, also what our we, what we wanted our outcomes to be in a slightly more detailed sense for Sakai 21. So I thought that that was that was really good progress. Um, you know, and it, and it was wow. I'm looking at a stormtrooper here. Um, there were there there were lots of stormtroopers, but uh, you know, so I, I I thought that was good. I mean, I also think that we had decent marching orders uh, for uh, for the UI next steps. So um, thanks to Michael Green for convening a few of us who had agreed to raise our hands to steward the project further a little bit. Um, you know, but from from my perspective. And you can see this in the in the summary that's linked. So <clears throat> we we agreed to have a team that would steward the project. We agreed to look at uh, a new nav structure at a new student dashboard, and to study D2L and Blackboard Ultra a little bit more than we had already. Some of the uh, the work that had been done foundationally focused on I focused a bit on D2L, but a, a bit more on uh, on Canvas. EdX and Coursera as, as comparators. So, so I think we've, we've got a sense of where we want to go next. It seems to me that the next step is to figure out 
what we want the scope of any uh, UI UX redesign to be. Uh, you know, is it now plus dashboard? Does it address some of the tools? You know, what what is what well, you know what what is it that we want to accomplish? And then we need to get a proposal for how many hours of, of designer time that's going to require, and that'll that'll take us to uh, cost and, and an engagement of, of a designer. Um, we, there was a there's a, a designer by the name of Jillian Lee that uh, Longsite had engaged in the fall to help us get prepared for Sakai Camp. So it's it's my hope that she'll continue on and and design the new UI according to the scope that we that we set up. Um, in, you know, working with the steering team. So that's that, that's what I hope will happen. Um, I'm sympathetic to Jillian's need as a full time contractor to be able to schedule her work so that she can make enough money to eat. So, you know, while she waits for us to get our act together, um, you know, that's uh, that's that's something that that we're sort of, you know, that's that's a ball that we're balancing. But, you know, from, from my perspective, I, th I thought we, we did a, we did a lot of really good work moving the ball forward in useful ways. I definitely agree. Gosh, I felt like the conversations were very positive. I felt like we had a lot of exciting things to talk about, about Sakai on a lot of different fronts. Um, and I felt like we moved the ball forward um, in a number of different ways. Um, we talked a little bit, especially um, in the last day and a half of the meeting, uh, about marketing uh, and about branding for Sakai. Uh, Josh shared you know, some more recent data from Infotech, uh, the company with whom we've contracted to provide uh, some market research for the LMS market. Um, and we talked about some other things uh, related to that. Um, Laura Sierra is always an integral part of those conversations. Laura, did you have um, anything that you wanted to share that really stood out to you, you know, as we had those marketing conversations or, you know, anything else um, that really stood out for you? Well, you can see the pictures right now while well, they just passed um, of Dr. Chuck's um, booth content that he's going to have, um, that he's going to use for conferences coming up. Um, we we kind of fine-tuned that. Um, over the last month of the year, there it is. So it's got a, a pretty nice presence that Sakai is going to be uh, showing off. And what conference is this that he's actually going to be sponsoring? I think it's ELI. ELI, yeah, ELI. So Sakai is actually going to be a sponsor at, at ELI. So that's going to get our our name out there a little bit. And of course, he's always got the the usual stuff that he wants to really head out to get attention. Um, on the side, you can't actually see on the side of um, his table cover, but he does have a statement about um, the fact that Sakai is, uh, has guarded student data for 15 years, and, and he really feels very strongly that that is the story that we will tell um, as we go forward to make us stand apart from most other um, LMSs that are on the market, is that um, student data has always been in our possession and it always will be. And um, that's the story that he really wants to, to send forward. So you can see the marketing material he has. And then what we've been kind of working on actually since fall, uh, a little bit of, in the summer, but that we hope to really finalize um, by this summer is um, a story that, that our community can tell as sort of one voice. When we talk about Sakai to um, the folks that we work with on our campus or when we go around and, and speak at conferences, um, we want to put together um, a tone with which we all communicate about Sakai so that whenever we talk about our product, whenever we talk about the LMS that our university trusts, we can have these same words when we describe it that help to kind of solidify the story that we tell and so that people, when they think of Sakai, they think of maybe five key things that we always sort of mention these five key things. These other LMSs, some of them are very large, they're sort of corporate products. They have a really strong branding message and they have a team of people on that. And we don't really have that. We don't have a corporate message, but we do have a corporate message in the sense that we are all one and that we all have similar desires out of our LMS. So I'm probably just kind of going on and on because these pictures are really, <laughs> really kind of fun to look at. Um, but that's the message that the marketing team is going to be working on in the next couple of months is solidifying a message that we can all use when we talk about Sakai and then also how our product looks to the outside world when we uh, put it online, when we talk about it in, in any of our, our online blogs, and of course uh, to tie in with messages that 
uh, Dr. Chuck takes around when he goes to different conferences. Absolutely. I think that's a great summary, Laura. I think that there was a lot of consensus that especially as we move toward uh, the forthcoming release of Sakai 21, um, that a number of the more problematic feature gaps and UI UX gaps between Sakai and other platforms are going to shrink even more than they already have. Um, and those things combined with Sakai's uh, deep roots and lasting roots in the educational community and its longstanding protection of important things like data make this a great time uh, for Sakai to be a little bit more unified and a little bit more aggressive in the way that it talks about itself. And so I think um, we should be on the lookout uh, for more news on that front from the marketing team uh, going forward. And so uh, be on the lookout for those things. Josh has posted a link to the roadmap um, and talks about the fact that the roadmap is pretty ambitious, especially for Sakai 21 to address those gaps. And I agree that it's pretty ambitious. And so I think it's going to be on all of us um, and on our institutions to pool our resources as best we can so that we can meet these deadlines. Because I think uh, getting Sakai 21 out on time, um, you know, closing and in some cases eliminating those gaps and creating gaps between us and other systems in a positive way is going to be absolutely essential. So I'm uh, looking forward to diving into that work and I know uh, other folks are too. Josh, we did. Oh, go ahead, Laura. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, Josh, do you want to talk more about the roadmap or shall I? Go for it. People have heard me talk a lot about the roadmap. I'd be happy to have other voices. Yeah, well, you know, you ran you ran the road by, roadmap by a lot of us in a lot of different situations, and um, and I was one of them on the initial roadmap that said, yeah, this one looks good. See what other people think about it. So, this version is the last one that was adopted at Sakai Camp. It's got everybody's input into it. But there was a lot of discussion on Sakai Camp about what Matt just said, holding our own feet to the fire and saying, you know, we've got to stop putting our institutional needs directly at loggerheads with community needs. We have to kind of get into a flow where, where we work on this institution and we all gang up and, and um, you know, help UVA bring their site builder into the community to make the community distribution better. And then we go over to the University of Dayton and we cherry pick some of their great work and put that into the community. And then we, um, I, even, I even said this, people are gonna hold me to it. I said, you will have no feature requests from Notre Dame <laughs> for version 20 or 21. And the reason I said that is that I don't want to divert anybody's um, resources, the community's resources, all of ours, from the, um, the workflow improvements. For example, now in assignments, a student has to hit the submit button twice, drives me crazy. Um, in site editor, we have known for a long time that we were gonna put manage participants and add participants back together, and we were gonna put manage tools and tool order back together, and we, and this uh, UI and UX improvements going to happen so that maybe it won't even look like tabs by the time we get to 2022, which you can you can see if you're looking at the roadmap. But but you know we we had we have these goals that we state are what we're all about. Um, but sometimes we forget that when you choose to do one thing, you you're actually saying no to a lot of other things. And um, I guess I brought that out and I bring it up to to you all because I know that we all do want to, um, you know, we there are certain features that our faculty tell us, you know, I got to have this feature, I got to have this feature, and it's, uh, it's really hard to put them off. But if we defer some of those immediate pleasures, I think we're, we're going to be very happy with the result in the long run as to reducing gnarly workflows, um, consolidating things, and and um, making a beautiful experience. When, one other thing that I had um, in regard to the roadmap is we put a lot of um, 
effort talking about this in, in the community kind of leading up to Sakai Camp. And it actually made the process of doing the straw man for um, Sakai 21 a lot easier. Because I know in, in prior years, we took like half a day to or more <laughs> to do the straw man for the next um, major release. But this year, we started with what we had in the roadmap. And we just kind of put a little more detail to it. But it really made that process go a lot faster faster. So I thought that was um, an, a beneficial side effect um, that we were able to, to use it in that way. Absolutely, Wilma. I completely agree. I think that really streamlined that process. And I think that was extremely well said, Laura Geckler. I think uh, to the point that Dave was making in the chat, you know, it's about converging our resources rather than splitting them. And I really do think um, after the conversations that we had uh, surrounding the roadmap and the other strategic things that we talked about over the course of Sakai Camp, that if we do converge our resources um, in the most effective way, we're going to be able uh, to produce some really great things, uh, beginning with uh, Sakai 21, which is going to have just a number of really exciting um, new and enhanced features. I know we also have some more technically minded folks on the call. I know Sean is here. I know that Matt Jones is here. I know that Adrian is here. Um, do you guys want to say any more technical things? Um, that we might have left off. I'll say one that I was given to understand by the by the technical folks, and and um, maybe I'm just translating for them. But on this column that says technical improvements, we. Um, we all in the room, even the non-technical people, um, were given to understand how much um, how much we can gain by automating QA testing. Uh, the bulk of it is done manually, and and this is also a plug to help with QA for our current release, so that it it will be the third one. We're um, we're working hard to make it the third one that has come out. Um, in March on time, just as predicted with everything in predicted. But at Sakai Camp, we were we were talking about how we could um, do a lot of automated testing if we got our resources together to that point. And the gain for all of us is more reliable software with fewer um, bugs that we fixed in a prior version coming back up to bite us again, uh, regressions they're called. Uh, so I was thrilled to learn about that, and I was um, glad to hear this grading service that has been talked about is a service that takes, um, I think they would call it, a, a abstracts the grade part from all the tools and puts it in one place. So any new tool could also use it. Is that right, guys? Uh, correct me on that if I'm wrong. Now I'll shut up. <laughs> I also thought, speaking again as a front-end guy, uh, that I was very excited to see that there was a lot of interest and a lot of buy-in from all of our developers who were there, uh, both the folks who work more in the back end and the folks who work more in the front end, um, about the importance of improving Sakai's UI UX experience generally. And you know that's something that's not always the easiest thing to do, especially in a product uh, as large as Sakai and as unwieldy uh, in some ways as Sakai. Um, but there was a, a lot of interest and a lot of understanding um, and a lot of buy-in uh, from all the developers that were there about the importance of that UI experience and uh, commitment uh, to improving it. And I thought that that was, that was a really great thing because I think it can be easy um, to just set those issues aside, especially in a piece of software that is, as Laura Geckler says in the chat, very complex. So I thought that was a really great thing. I also want to, I'd like to repeat what I just put in the chat a minute ago, a, a small plug for QA. One of the things we discovered at Sakai Camp, and this isn't new news, right? But uh, our ability to QA Sakai 
uh, is directly linked to our ability to release on time. So that's the the current bottleneck is get everything test, getting everything tested right now. So uh, a lot of people are pitching in right now, and that's that's phenomenal. I think that if there are folks in this group who haven't yet pitched in on QA and could spare a little bit of time, I put in a link in the chat to the uh, the, the QA sign up Google Sheet, so you can you can pick a tool. Follow the link to the test plan and uh, and do some testing to try and move this along. So please consider giving a little bit of your time. Absolutely. Thanks for that plug, Josh. Charles Bristow, what kind of thoughts do you have? So I, if, if I may, I'm, I'm going to go on a slightly different tangent rather than talking about specifics. But just as a first time attendee, I thought it was um, a great opportunity um, for face-to-face -face discussions um, between developers and, and functional support people and QA people and UI people um, to just be able to sit in a room and bash some of these things out, um, even though it got a little contentious. At time. Well, actually, I don't think it really ever got contentious. Um, but there was great back and forth, and, um, and also... Um, I'll, I'll echo Matt, um, you know, the, the willingness of everybody to listen to um, other points of view. Um, I thought it was just a great opportunity. I mean, these calls are nice for, for doing some of these things, but to be able to be in a locked in a room almost um, for an extended period of time to really um, have at some of these kind of prickly issues, I thought was great and I enjoyed it. I'm done. <laughs> Absolutely, Charles. I think that's a great way to really sum up the meeting in a nutshell. Um, I was also a first-time attendee, and so to be able uh, to get in a room uh, with people who share a lot of really incredible experience and commitment to educational technology in general and experience and commitment to Sakai, um, and in some cases, um, new eyes uh, because there were some folks who joined us for the first time who had just started working with Sakai or were coming to Sakai from outside sources uh, like our UI UX contractor Jillian. So to be able to get in a room with all those people and really start to dive deeply um, into some of these important strategic issues for the future of Sakai was a really exciting thing to do. And so uh, if you've considered going to Sakai Camp in the past but haven't been able to do so, I would really encourage you uh, to sign up and go um, next year. It usually happens around the same time, you know, in late January. Um, so I would encourage you to see if you can uh, find some time on your calendar and head down to Orlando because I think you'll be glad that you did. Plus, you might have the opportunity to visit Disney World with Sean Foster. And let me just tell you that there is nothing Nothing in the world like running through Disney World with Sean Foster, who is the expert on all things Disney. So if you don't do anything else, you got to go down and you got to go to Disney with Sean. Anybody else have any final thoughts here in our last minute or so that they want to be sure we get recorded? As Laura Stewart comments in the chat, sometimes when you run through Disney with Sean, you literally run uh, through Disney, <laughs> but it's totally worth it. Adrian says in the chat that Sean told him that he's sick of Disney and he's had enough. That's remarkable. I'm stunned to hear that. <laughs> and Matt Jones comments that he needs a break over at Universal. So maybe we'll just have to switch things up next year and head over to Universal instead. Yeah, I'd like to second everything that everybody uh, said about Sakai Camp. It was great to see everybody. Um, I, I really, particularly this year, I liked a lot of the activities that we did more than just the discussions. Some of the discussions we can always do online, but it was great to do more of the hands-on workshops. So I think that was a great test for um, how we might be able to do it in future years. Um, and uh, I, I think there was also discussion about making it a full three days um, and there seemed to be some support for that because the, the days just go by so fast. So yeah, really looking forward to future Sakai camps and it was great to see both existing and, and new faces there.
I agree, yeah, Sean. And I'll just echo that too. It's always great to see people in person. And as you saw from the pictures, there's a lot of great conversations that happen over dinner or doing, you know, putt putt golf or, you know, going to the theme park. So um, it's really a, a great place to connect with other community members. So I encourage everybody um, on the call to think about attending or if you've been before, come back again. And um, it's always a lot of fun. And Michael comments in the chat that he'd like time to jumpstart some of the projects that we were talking about. And that was the only negative that he saw. I agree, Michael, sometimes when you're talking about something and you're getting excited about something and you're starting to chart a way forward, it's nice to be able to actually begin to follow that road a little bit. And so perhaps move into three days, a full three days, um, which was definitely a consensus among the attendees, might be helpful for us there. I completely agree with that. Josh is voting for a full week next year, uh, which unfortunately might not work for some of our schedules, but will be a great idea. I definitely agree. And Sean is suggesting that we have a day one to get started, a day two to get into things, and a day three to get projects going. Absolutely. What's well, 11 o'clock? Thanks, everybody, for a tremendous conversation. Uh, we got a chance to work through uh, some really important uh, security and pedagogy issues, which was great. And we had a chance to have a great discussion about some of the most important high level things uh, that came out of Sakai Camp. So for those of you who are available, please move over to Big Blue Button Room 3 uh, for the UI UX call that starts right now. And obviously, we hope to see you back here uh, in two weeks on Wednesday, February 19th. We don't have a topic at this point, so we may be reaching out to you uh, if you have exciting things uh, that are going on at your institution. So uh, if you have things that you'd like to share, please feel free to contact Wilma or Trisha or myself. Otherwise, we might come looking for you. So thanks, everybody, uh, for some great discussion. And we'll see you right back here in two weeks. Thanks very much.